In this Wo Long Fallen Dynasty video, I'm going to be giving you guys tips to help you hit the ground running with this game. If you're excited to play, haven't gotten to play yet, these tips are meant for you. I'm going to be explaining some of the mechanics of the game so that when you start playing, you're not all confused about how to do blah and how to do X, Y, and Z, and you understand how the gameplay works so that you can just play the game and really enjoy it. So the first thing I want to talk about in this video is Spirit and the Spirit Gauge and how it plays a role in combat. All combat in Wo Long is based around getting and losing spirit as you get hit, as you hit the enemy, etc. And managing this resource is a key part of success in Wo Long. For all intents and purposes, it's best to think of spirit as basically a combination between stamina and mana. You use it to cast spells, you use it to dodge attacks, etc. So when you're thinking of spirit, just think of it as a resource that you use to do things. Getting into the nitty gritty of how spirit works, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is how you gain spirit. This is how you fill up your spirit bar. You do this by attacking regularly with square attacks, or you deflect attacks successfully. This will increase your spirit, giving you more resources to dodge, more resources to cast spells, etc. Additionally, if you are somewhere on the negative side of your spirit status bar, waiting a certain amount of time will cause your spirit to go back up to zero or neutral. You lose spirit when you take damage, when you dodge, when you deflect an attack unsuccessfully, when you block, when you use a martial art, or when you cast a spell. What this means is that you can't just sit there and fling spells because eventually you'll run out of spirit and then you have to wait for it to come back up a bit in order to cast another spell. Or if you want to use martial arts, for instance, you can't just use martial art after martial art after martial art and stagger an enemy indefinitely. You have to wait to recover some spirit before casting another one. Finding the balance between attacking with regular attacks, deflecting attacks, and then using your martial arts and your spells, etc. is a big part of being successful in the combat of this game. When a player or enemy reaches the lower limit of their spirit gauge and they take a hit, they get staggered and they're vulnerable to a fatal strike. You, your primary goal with bosses in this game is to lower their spirit gauge to this point so that you can do fatal strikes on them. That's the best way to deal damage to them. Obviously, you'll be dealing damage to them while this is occurring, but that is the best way to deal with bosses in this game. And if you're talking about PvP, you want to do this on another player so they get staggered and you can walk up and press triangle. Next, I want to take a look at the five attributes in this game and sort of explain what attributes you should focus on for what build. First up is the Wood Virtue. This gives you over double the HP per point invested as every other attribute. So if you want to be a tanky character, this is great. And also adding to this is that the amount of spirit you lose when you get hit by attacks is reduced. This means that your spirit will stay higher even through enemy attacks. So this is a very good attribute for a tanky character. So if you want to be someone who trades damage, who stands there in heavy armor and swings back, this is pretty good. And lastly, it also increases your spell duration. This is usually positive buffs, so if you're someone who likes to buff themselves with buffs that like reduce the damage you take or increase your damage, these will last longer on you for each point here, which kind of goes hand in hand with the tankiness. Moving along to the Fire Virtue, this is going to increase the amount of spirit that you gain when you hit enemies with regular attacks, so you'll build up more spirit more quickly when hitting them with regular attacks, and it also reduces the spirit cost of your martial arts. So if you like to use martial arts for different weapons, it's going to reduce how much spirit you need in order to use those, allowing to use them more regularly without having to consume as much spirit. Moving to the Earth Virtue, this increases your equipment weight limit, allowing you to wear heavier armor. The speed that you move in this game is determined by the proportion of weight you have to your max weight limit. So the higher you increase your max weight, the more mobility you're gonna have in heavier to medium heavy armor. So if you want good mobility, but good protection, then this is an attribute you'd wanna invest in. Additionally, it increases the amount of spirit gained when you deflect an attack. So when you deflect, you consume spirit, However, when you successfully deflect an attack, you not only consume spirit, but then you gain spirit. So usually you come out ahead, and this will increase the amount that you come out ahead when you successfully deflect an attack. Next up, you have the Metal Virtue. This firstly gives you spirit sustainability. This is like increasing the duration when you have positive spirit, when you're on the positive side of the meter, that it lasts before it starts to go back to neutral. So if you're someone who attacks infrequently and isn't always in melee combat, and you build up some, you don't want it to go away quickly so you can use it to cast spells, this is important. And combined with that, it also reduces the spirit consumption of your wizardry spells. So their spells are going to use less spirit when you're casting them, and your spirit in the positive side is going to remain longer, allowing you to cast spells more easily. So if you want to make a spellcaster build, this is a great attribute for you. And finally, we come to the Water Virtue, which does two things. It increases your stealth, making it harder for enemies to detect you so that you can sneak around maps more easily and get backstabs. And secondly, it reduces the spirit cost of your deflects. Again, remember that if you deflect successfully, you usually come out gaining spirit. So this would increase the amount of spirit that you would net because it would cost you less to deflect, just like the Earth Virtue would, except the Earth Virtue isn't reducing the cost of your deflect. 
It's just giving you more back for doing it successfully. So theoretically, even if you don't connect with a successful deflect, you will actually reduce the amount of spirit you lose from failing one. Now that we've gone through the attributes in a bit, I want to talk a little bit about weapon types and scaling. Every weapon in this game has attributes that it scales with, increasing the damage that it deals. The higher the letter, the better damage that you're going to get. So A is better than B, C is better than D, etc. C- minus is worse than C+, plus. you get the idea. So you want to make sure that you're matching the weapon to the playstyle that you want. Now weapons in the same category of weapons, for instance swords, have different scaling. Not all swords scale best with fire, for instance, some scale better with the metal virtue. So you want to make sure that you find the weapon type that you like, and then find a weapon inside that weapon type that has the scaling that best matches your thing. That will allow you to play with the weapon that you like, and still have the build that you want. So once you've figured out the weapon type that you want, and you've figured out one that has the scaling that you want, you're going to want to upgrade that weapon at your blacksmith in order to increase its scaling so that you get more damage. And you also want to look out for versions of that same weapon that are higher rank. So this is like rank 3 or rank 4. You're going to want one of those over a rank 1. And what this does is it gives you additional bonuses on the weapon. So usually rank 1 has one bonus, and rank 2 has two bonuses, rank 3 has three bonuses, and rank 4 has four bonuses. These bonuses allow you to get extra passive effects to your character, like more martial arts damage, or more fire damage, or uh, more spirit back when you deflect. And you're going to want to look for ones that are applicable to your build, and if you can't find them, then you're going to manually replace them and get the ones that you want. So the easiest way to do this is by going to the blacksmith in the Hidden Village once you've gotten there, and going into the weapon that you like, and removing the bonuses that you don't like. Maybe it gives you a bonus to stealth, and you're not making a stealthy character. Remove that. And what's going to happen is after you remove enough of those from various weapons, you're going to have a lot of jewel fragments. So then you can go to that same weapon, pick an empty slot, and then you'll get to pick from a list of available bonuses. So maybe you're making a fire build, you might want to add like flame power on there, or something like burning status duration, or increased damage against burning targets, something like that, that's going to benefit your build. You can do this really regularly in order to get exactly what you want on the weapon. Just make sure it's the weapon type that you like, it has the scaling that you want, and it's a good rank, like 3 or 4. Now, if you're having trouble getting the equipment that you want, one thing that you can do to help speed up and ensure you're getting the weapon type, at least, of that type, is go to this old guy, I don't know how to pronounce his name exactly, in the Hidden Village, but he's not far from the battle flag there. Just run over to him and go to spend your accolades. This is stuff you get from just, like, doing achievements in the game naturally. From naturally playing, you're going to get accolades. You're going to see it pop up on the screen, you'll be like, what is that? Well, this is the guy that you can spend that at. You can buy consumables, you can buy all kinds of things. But what I suggest doing is buying weapons with it. If you know what weapon type you like, you can basically go random, buy like a random one of that rank. So maybe you want a rank 1 one, you can't afford anything else, or maybe you have enough to afford a rank 4, and you can roll to see what rank 4 weapon you get. This is a good way to help you kind of isolate the weapon that you want, and randomly get some weapons from that weapon group that will allow you to get better equipment quickly. And a couple other things I want to mention is that this same NPC, while you're there in the Hidden Village, you can actually respec your character infinitely. So if you don't like the way your build is, or you know, you maybe you spent some points where you shouldn't at the beginning, you can just respec here. You can reallocate your points as much as you want. Anytime you want, you can come back here and do this, and you can play around with as many different builds as you want. So make sure to do that here. But another really cool thing is you can also change your appearance with the same character. So maybe you want to change genders, or maybe you don't like your hairstyle, or maybe you want to give yourself bigger boobs. I don't know what you want to do. But there are so many different things you can do here uh, with this guy in terms of, you know, customizing your character. This is the guy for all that stuff. So make sure you remember where he is and go for him if you need any of those things. And the last thing I want to talk about is morale and boss fights and how the morale system works in this game. So Wolong has a system where essentially it rewards you for exploration because they place these flags all around the map. And when you set your battle flag on them, you increase your fortitude rank. Your fortitude rank is essentially your base morale. Like, you can never go lower than that rank if you die. Normally when you die, your morale will go all the way back down to zero. But every flag you've planted increases that by about one, roughly. So that means that, like, if you've planted eight flags, if you die, your morale won't go to zero. It'll go to eight, if that makes sense. So why that's important is that enemies have different morale ranks versus your morale rank. And if they're way higher than you you're going to take more damage from them when they attack you. So they're going to be more difficult and more challenging. And if you want to speed run your way through the game, you're going to find it incredibly difficult by not planting these battle flags. But not planting these battle flags can also do some other things for you. For instance, the drop rates on enemies are better. The morale you gain from them by killing them is better without having a high 
you know, morale already. So if you're fighting an enemy that you have a high morale difference from, maybe it's like 10 levels above you, you're going to gain a lot of morale from killing that enemy. But if you're only a couple levels below or at the same level, you won't gain as much. So one thing that you can do, actually, if you want to get very, very high morale in a level, is you can go around and fight everything first, if you're good enough, and get tons of morale from doing that, and then go plant all the battle flags, since that doesn't respawn the enemies unless you rest. And then you can go fight the boss, and you'll have way higher morale than the boss. Keep in mind that when you fight a boss in this game, they're going to have a certain amount of morale, and you're going to have a hard time with a boss if your morale is lower than theirs. So make sure minimally you get all the flags on the map if you're struggling with a boss fight. Go back and get them if you can't beat a boss, and make sure to get them as you're exploring the levels. And one more thing I want to mention about morale and why it's so important in this game is that a lot of the spells in the game are locked behind a morale rank. So some spells have zero, usually the bottom ones, and then it kind of progressively gets higher as you go further into each spell tree. And that means like more powerful spells require you to have more morale ranks. You can't just take the most powerful spells from each tree and then start using them at the beginning of a level. You actually have to build up your morale. As enemies get harder and harder, you'll get more access to more and more powerful spells. So keep that in mind while you're playing and make sure that you're slotting some low-level morale spells so that you can use them at the beginning of level and then maybe having some medium or higher spells that you can cast as you gain more in morale or put low you know, morale spells at the beginning of the level and then swap in some of the stronger ones as you get further into a level. Well, those are my tips for Will Long Fallen Dynasty. I hope you've learned some stuff from this. I hope I didn't spoil you too much. The idea here is that you understand how certain mechanics of the game work so that when you play, you're not wondering like, Wait, what are all these things they're throwing at me? How does combat work? Where do I upgrade my stuff? How do I change the bonuses on my gear? What weapons am I looking for? All this is to try and give you information that you can know now so that when you play, you don't have to sit there and worry about it. You can just play. So I hope you found this guide helpful. If you have further questions about the game, please let me know in the comments below. Are you guys playing well along Fallen Dynasty? Did you find this helpful? Let me know in the comments.